Okay, we're about to burn down the house, ladies and gentlemen, um, which is uh, what we do here on Agenda 21 Radio anyway, uh, three de- three hours a day, five days a week, actually six days a week, actually 24-7 is really what happens with Agenda 21 Radio when you listen to us on Red State Talk Radio. We're the uh, one of the top ten top-talking radio shows in the nation on Red State Talk Radio on uh, talk stream live and we're very very proud of that there's 85 top talkers in the nation on talk stream live and uh, from the 6 a.m to 9 a.m time slot we're either 7 8 or 9 in that time slot so uh, we're really pr- we're very very proud of that we have a lot of listeners across the nation and we're glad to have that really do appreciate those that are in albany new york i think the last monday's show was kind of putting it over the top because i was calling on people in albany new york and other places to call in on anthony weiner because it was clearly a case of child abuse. Actually, it was child porn what was going on with Anthony Weiner. And I think that's really what the the investigators have now decided. And the, the, apparently, we call it the Child Protective Services here in California, but your version of it there in New York responded. I'm not saying it was because of our radio show, but it, all of a sudden there's a big investigation going on, which is exactly appropriate. Anyway, one of the things that we talk about here on this radio show is how do we relate uh, what is going on with the globalists to the local level, the local community. And I've invited in... Uh, Jason Reichert, who is uh, in the lives in the city of uh, Yuba City, California, where I live, Northern California, and um, we got issues going on at the local level, and uh, to talk about, you know, how it, is it that local governance uh, regulations, taxations, and so on are oppressing you and can oppress you in one way or another, and we're going to talk about a, a business owner. Uh, that is being oppressed right now, or at least there's a, a level of misunderstanding or understanding. Uh, we're going to let you choose and decide based upon what Jason has to say about it. And this is, um, you know, our perception of what we're seeing here. And as citizens of the world, you need to be aware of these kind of behaviors by your governance uh, systems that are out there and, and take action, do something about it. And Jason has decided to take action on an issue here of local importance. And Jason, welcome to Agenda 21 Radio. And uh, tell us a little about what, what's going on. You've got an issue going forward with the city uh, on behalf of one of our uh, businesses here. Yeah, Kumar at the Washington Avenue Market. Um, I, most everybody local has heard of this, of, you know, the 16-ounce beer, single beer fiasco. What's going on is he, Kumar wanted to sell a 16-ounce single can of beer, which he already sells a 24. He sells whatever other size they come in. But the fact is, is the city told him, no, we're not going to allow you to do this. So, if and, he, there were, and let me back you up. He has a license to sell from, yes. uh, from the state of California. Yeah, he right. has an ABC license right. to sell from the state of California. And so the city said no. Kumar, does it say on the license that he can't sell 16 ounce? Now it does, yes. Uh, now it does. Okay, yes. but before it didn't? Well, before it did, it did, and that's what he was – he wrote a letter and it paid the fees to ABC to get that removed. Okay. And ABC sends a letter to the city to see if they want to take any action. So ABC sent the letter to the city. The city said, well, we take exception to the fact that he wants to sell the 16 ounce can of beer. And there was a couple other exceptions that he wanted to take. That they wanted to take. I don't know what those were. And so the the ABC, did they? What was the concern with the ABC with the sixteen ounce beer for his license? They said with ABC there was no issue. Oh, okay. But with the city there was. They said since he was in what they considered a residential area, the store, that they didn't want him to be able to sell a sixteen ounce can of beer. Now this store, as I understand, is a liquor store as well. Yes. So they sell spirits. They, they sell everything. Okay. So everything but a sixteen ounce can, of, <laughs> single can of beer. All right. Well, that's that to me is a little irregular, but uh, well, and, I, I'm not, I'm not you know I'm not all up to date and speed on the the ABC rules and regulations, but uh, you know I'm not Hillary Clinton either. Nor nor am I. <laughs> but and well, so it gets whenever we whenever we started this, Kumar came to me and said, you know, you're running for city council. Is there anything we can do? So I looked into it, and I figured there was some city ordinance or some amended city code that said that you couldn't sell a 16-ounce can of beer. Well, it turns out there's not. So I went around to a few other stores, myself, just looking around, and they were all selling the 16-ounce single cans. So that hit a key with me because, you know... What's the reason for the restriction? Exactly, and it's somebody's, somebody's individual rights that are being trampled there. Right. So I went to the city and talked with them and, and first gave them a phone call and asked why. And they said, well, we're trying to move away from that. And I said, but the issue is, is there's no ordinance and there's no city amended code. 
So how did you come to this decision? They said, well, we thought it was a good idea to put a restriction on Kumar to start this process moving forward. And and there it, there has to be a reason for a restriction since he has a clean bill of health basically from ABC, the exactly. State Department, the State ABC. Exactly. So their idea is, and their restriction was put on because he was in a residential neighborhood. But the problem with that is, is with no city ordinance, no right. amended code. Right. I keep going back to that because I really want everybody to understand that this is just one person's, one executive staff member at City Hall that came up with this idea mm-hmm. and his good idea that he thinks is a good idea to put his thumb on an entrepreneur in our in our area, in our city, to do this whenever everybody else can do it. Now, how long um, has this person been in the position that he's been in? Um well, that's kind of interesting. Whenever he was in the position, it was Darren Gale. Whenever he was in the position, he was only an interim. Oh, inter- oh you know, for that position. For that to, position. Right. So they were looking for one. And he's on the planning commission. Uh, no, he was. He is in the economic development department now. Okay. He's the he's the manager. That's where he's in now. But was, yeah. he was managing another department. Yeah, at the he time was when managing community and, development. And he made a collective decision on his own. Yes. He, did he act with any other people in the in the city or? He just made a decision that no 16-ounce beers were going to be sold there, so he put a restriction using his authority, his, his color of authority of the state to do that. That is exactly what he did. So, with that being said, now there's a new community development director, Arnaldo Rodriguez. So, I went and had a meeting, a sit-down meeting with Arnaldo to say, you know, this isn't a good idea. If you want to do this, go ahead and file a city ordinance, let the people have their day, if they want a city ordinance that say they can't sell a 16-ounce beer, great, then the people can vote that way. If they don't, then you can't restrict one person and take away one person's liberty. Right. Because once you take away one person's liberty, it's kind of what you talk about here a lot. Once you take away one person's liberty without taking others away, you become a tyrant. Okay. And even while taking others away, you still become a tyrant. It's called uh, James Colmey and Hillary Clinton. Exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. So... We sit down. I, I think the audience can appreciate that one in light of what's going on with Hillary Clinton and James <laughs> Comey and the Friday the Friday dump that just happened last Friday. And so this is what's going on. So it was his good idea, and he was an intern. Mm-hmm. So now we have a full time community yeah, development. Are they going to revisit that, or what are they going to? We do? did. What we did is we revisited it. What what they wanted to do was they said we'll email you or we'll call you. Give us a week or two. Well, the problem with that is, is Kumar's been hanging on to them going to email him or call them for over a year. Oh, okay. So now, that's acceptable. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, I think that's pretty. And this is so they and they've known about this issue, right? They've known it's been sitting there on somebody's desk and not being acted upon. Exactly. Okay. And then um, so Kumar um, wants to. So he contacts you just recently, and that's been sitting out there in abeyance for a year, nothing happening with it. He can't sell beer. He can't sell the 16 ounces. They just think he's going to go away. Exactly. Okay. And, and this is this is the thing that really drives me kind of nuts because, and we're going to come up to a break here in a second, but um, what really kind of drives me nuts is here you have somebody who's acting very um, capriciously um, as, a, as, a, as a, 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 a governmental agency. He's apparently got no law behind him. There's no codes, no nothing that says that. And that's this is my understanding. I, and I'm, I'm more than welcome to look at to see what codes that are there, and I'll probably do that at some point in time. But you know, when you get governance acting like this, and they don't do something for over a year, uh, it, and that's to the financial detriment of Kumar, the the owner of the Washington Market, which is a, a it's a li- it has a liquor license. It has it has a complete liquor license, and it can't sell 16 ounce beers, which I find absolutely amazing. And I know that I went around and uh, just before the show saw the the other uh, uh, businesses around it, and they all sell the 16 yes. ounces, which I find absolutely amazing. Anyway, so ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. We're going to get into this because it's a local issue, and this is how local governance works to be, well, tyrannical for you. Stay with us. You're listening to Agenda 21 Radio. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually... Um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. And welcome back to Agenda 21 Radio. We're with uh, Jason Reichert, 
local community member here in the city of uh, Yuba City, California. He's also running for city council. He's taken up the cause for uh, one of our city members um, and civilians, citizens, if you will, um, who's being somewhat oppressed by governance, um, which is what happens at the local level. You've got to remember something about Agenda 21, the United Nations plan for the 21st century, is that their motto is to think globally, act locally. And uh, a lot of your communities in the United States have already been infected with the various federal grant programs that have been spirited in here by the non-governmental organizations that have had enormous influence on local governance systems and how they uh, treat the citizens. And by the way, I am a constitutionalist, and I know Jason's a constitutionalist, and a lot of other people are now starting to realize what it is to be a constitutionalist. We have the notion as constitutionalists like Antonin Scalia that, you know, basically the citizens run the government. It's not that the government runs the citizens because you have tyranny. You know, that's Thomas Jefferson saying. You have tyranny. You have ty- uh, tyrants that are in charge if the citizens aren't in charge. So we don't have that notion. But right now we've got a situation where a market owner is being denied the opportunity to sell 16-ounce beers. Um, and there's really not a very good reason why he can't. And uh, it's becoming a financial hardship on him. And the city has been very, very slow to respond because apparently they made an arbitrary and capricious decision to disallow him from selling 16-ounce beers when he's got a full liquor license, which is just so, – there's something else behind this. And obviously, by the city's delay in responding by a year to this issue until you bring it up um, – is evidence, I think, prima facie evidence that uh, there's some something wrong with the picture with the city. Oh, and they're actually acting tyrannically, it, it, it basically. Absolutely. So what we had is on Thursday, the 25th of August, we went and had a meeting with the city. Right. And with that meeting with the city, they basically told me that it was their good idea. They really didn't have a city ordinance. They had no city amended code. And they would think about repealing this issue. They said, we'll give you a call or an email, give us a few weeks. Well, after a year had gone by, there was no way we were going to give them two weeks. <laughs> There's no way we were going to wait for a phone call or an email. Right. So we gave them an ultimatum of one week or another video comes out and we fire on you again because this is just ridiculous. Oh, so the, the, your, your proactivity has been that you've been making some speeches at the market. Exactly. And you've been bringing this issue to the public. Um, and now it's sort of found its well its way into the radio waves here locally in the local community, um, and they've actually responded. But um, and I'm not going to pass judgment on the response. But uh, what I'm going to pass judgment on is the fact of lack of response for over a year. Yes, that's a problem. Until somebody all of a sudden now has become an activist on the part of the store owner, and then it's all of a sudden a completely different picture. We're starting to get the more PR oriented aspect of it, uh, where the uh, you know think globally, act locally business is starting to come in. <laughs> yes, <laughs> as I call it. So we had a second meeting on Friday the second, which was this last Friday. Mm-hmm. And we went in, and we were anxious to hear what they had, what their outcome was. And so they wanted to know what, what, how we were going to react on either outcome before they gave us an outcome. And what they really wanted was no reaction to the city. The city didn't act and react in any bad way. Well, that wasn't going to happen. They've taken from this man and been a tyrant and trampled his liberty for over a year. Sorry, you're going to get a black eye for that. That's the way it goes. Mm-hmm. So we mentioned that to him. Let them know how it's going to go, that we were going to you know, call them a tyrant, we were going to call them a bully, and they were going to repeal it. Well, they decided not to repeal it. And I told them, I said, well, this gets worse for you guys. I mean, now we're going to get it out there of how much tax money you're paying, right. you know, because it's going to take taxpayer money to for them to enforce somebody, something that they have no right to enforce. Right. Now, I guess the question is um – it, 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 and I see, I, I'm, you know, having been a superintendent and everything, I always go back to what's the law exactly. and, and what is on record and what you can and can do administratively. And I'm, I'm not uh, really totally familiar with what goes on with the, with the city codes and so on. They have to be exactly the same kind of codes I was – you have to – enforcement acts back has to be the same as what I was doing. But um, if failing any kind of uh, uh, decision authority that that person has um, and the fact that they didn't act on it in over a year – says something. Now, that's very suspicious right there, and I think most people would understand that their lack of reaction. Uh, did Kumar petition to them, or has, has the store owner actually taken the, the position of uh, going back to them and of appealing the process, and where are we at in that? He did. He called them. They never did call him back, so he went down to visit with them, uh, him and a Tea Party 
member went down to meet with them, and they said, okay, we'll get back to you, not in a week, but possibly two weeks. And then we come into the year issue. So no, nothing back. So you, he had petitioned him twice to at least think about not, right. not, not being a tyrant to him. So back to the meeting on Friday, they decided that they're going to uphold this, even though they have no city ordinance, no city amended code, that they're going to stand behind what they believe was a good idea. Right. And where does the ABC now come in? The the Bureau of, of ABC, the okay. state authority. Where does it come yeah. in here? Well, Q, Kumar doesn't want to pay the seven hundred or eight hundred dollars to reapply whenever he knows the city's going to turn it down. So ABC has no standing right now. The best that could happen is Kumar could reapply for to sell the sixty ounce single beer to the city again. Well, he applies to ABC. Oh, ABC. ABC sends the letter to see to the city to see if they have any anything they want to say. Do they, did they give a reason, is there any justification why they said no? They said because it was in a, a public, a residential neighborhood. Well, the problem is, is less than 1,600 feet away, there's another store right. that sells the 16-ounce yeah, can that, that's yeah. across the street from a park. Right. There's more, and an more public complex. areas. <laughs> there's more I mean, public it's, areas, it's, right. Yeah, it's much it, more. So there's got to be another, there has to be another reason to all this. Absolutely and, not. Um, we're, we're running just about up to the close to the uh, segment here, but okay. um, what's the next step that's going to happen for um, you guys? What are you going to well, do here? the next step is we've got to petition now the city council, which herein lies the problem with that, is we're wasting taxpayer right. money. It's a money we're thing. Wasting, we're wasting city council time. We're wasting my time. We're wasting Kumar's time. And it's still a detriment to his store that he's trying to run right. over something that – a law that does not exist that they're enforcing. Right. It's absolutely – And you see, this is the conundrum that local communities all over this nation find themselves in, is that you have uh, regulators, and they're called regulators. They've been called regulators for the, for 200 years in this country, um, have been uh, doing arbitrary and capricious things. Because, you know, I still don't understand, and I'm going to call the city and find out what, there's, what they feel their standing is to be able to come up with this kind of a ruling, and why the delay? Well, you know that's that's the other thing is when the when government isn't responsive, and we see this right now with the Clinton emails, it's the same thing, and that's why I tell people the Clinton email thing is not any different than what's going on in your city council or your, your local governance areas, and you need to call them to task and use the Constitution to do it, which is what you're doing, well, um, it, in in trying to create standing and and uh, ex- explain it from a constitutional standpoint. And the other thing is we've uncovered that this isn't the only time this is going on. Now it's a different subject. But a lady's garage burnt down. She got the insurance money to rebuild. They're telling her she can't rebuild until she puts in drought-tolerant landscape. <laughs> and they will not issue the permit. And there's no um, no no authority to back up the drought. No, to- no, Here no. we go with the drought in California, ladies no. and gentlemen, the, non, the, the anthropogenic drought caused by Jerry Brown and others. No authority whatsoever. So now they're bringing it to a single citizen. That right. they're going to put their thumb on. So it, and this is this, by the way, is rampant in other parts of the country, Jason. This well, is part of this is part of what's going on here with the Agenda Twenty One folks. And so it looks like I'm going to be very busy on yeah. my run for city council. <laughs> I, I, other than I bet you will actually getting out knocking on doors. Right. I'm going to be doing that also, but it's going to get very very busy with just going after. Well, you got to keep it up, and you know one of the things you got to throw at them all the time is the constitutional nature to it, and as you, you know. Um, um, we we are going to be sponsoring the Liberty Tour Five is all about the Constitution, mm-hmm. and uh, this is uh, something that makes a lot of governance people really uncomfortable, and obviously it's making people in our community here uncomfortable. But when you throw it up out there, uh, that it's hard for them to deny it, and uh, you just have to keep on pushing forward. So thanks a lot for being on Agenda Twenty One Radio. We're getting the countdown here from the Wiki Man, and uh, we'll check up back with you in the next few weeks to see what's really going on here and keep everybody Sounds abreast. Good. Thank you. Anyway, so much, ladies Paul. and gentlemen, visit our website Agenda Twenty One Radio dot news and a21r.com will have more information about what's going on here locally in this town so we'll be back you're listening to agenda 21 radio